were you always a bodybuilder too? Because you're, no. you're a bodybuilder, you compete, yeah. you know, you were in the Olympia last year. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting if you had asked me, um, let's see, how long have I been doing this? I started competing in 2014 and it was supposed to be a, a bucket list thing, meaning I went to a gym and it wasn't even I was looking, oh, one day I want to be a bodybuilder. I didn't even know who Ronnie Coleman was. So it, it was more of a uh, when I was at the gym, you know, you go when I train, I tend to go the same days and same time. So yeah. you see the same kind of people. And I had this one guy that said, what are you training for? And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I training for? <laughs> so anyway, you know, he thought I was training for something because of the way I train. Because I don't do, I, first of all, I don't do short workouts. And I do pretty intense workouts. And I lift heavy. So he's like, well, what are you training for? Because no one trains like you and not train for something. I'm like, I'm not right. I'm literally not training for anything. So why don't you do a show? I'm what are you talking about? <laughs> and then a trainer at that gym suggested I do a show. I'm like, I don't even know where to go. Like, I don't even, like, I don't know anything. I've never even been to a show. So they actually recommended a, a coach and that's how, and then, and it was going to be, okay, I was just going to try it. I was just going to go through the process. Mark, I thought it was going to be last hundred percent. was going to be last. I didn't know what I was doing. So had the coach, put me through the diet and the exercises and all that stuff competed. And what he suggested is because you've never done a show, why don't we do it? Like what we call a practice show, meaning it, you know, just to see what works, what's not working, whether it be diet, exercise, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll do the real show two or three weeks later. And I'm like, okay, cool. So did the practice show and I got second. All of a sudden I'm like, Oh, First of all, I'm like happy as anything. So I was expecting to be last. Yeah. And then the other is like, oh, I was one spot from getting first place. I know I'm having a show come up. So obvious, I'm so excited thinking maybe I have a shock of getting first. So I did the show, the real show, and I got second, deservedly so. The person who beat me just definitely deserved to beat me. She was definitely had more muscle than I did. So I'm like, Oh, I was so close. I got second two times. So that began my journey into bodybuilding. <laughs> wow. So you, got, you got hooked. I got hooked and I kept going. And uh, yeah, I just kept competing. And I ended up doing, I initially started in figure. So for people who don't know, there's different levels of muscle for, well, I'm, you know, for, for bodybuilders, whether you're male or female. So for females, the lower muscle is the bikini then they have something called, well, now they have something called wellness where it's more uh, glute and leg development. Um, then there's fitness and then there's figure, then there's women's physique and then there's bodybuilding. So I was in figure, uh, cause initially I asked my coach, I, I thought it was gonna be bikini cause I was this little skinny thing. Well, I wasn't skinny. I was like this slender thing, but I had a big tummy. But anyway, <laughs> it was like, he was like, no, you're, you've got the body of a figure person. So I'm like, okay, I got to trust them. They don't know what they're talking about. So yeah. I did it. Um, and then it was, uh, I was, it was suggested. I also try women's physique and I thought, okay, don't you have to have a lot of muscle for women's physique? And I said, just try it. So I did. So I did, I competed in both and I want, we wanted to find out my coach and I, as far as rating, how like um, do the judges prefer me in figure or women's physique? So based on the feedback and how I placed and I started placing better in women's physique than I did in figure. Um, so I ended up doing both for a while because I wanted to test drive it to see, you know, was that just that one show? Yeah. Not being more than that show. And then, you know, I spoke to the judges after I spoke to the head judge and I, and I asked him, what do you think I should do? And he said, what do you like to do? He, he said, do you like to lift heavy? And I said, yes. And he said, you know, and, and he said, well, we'll do women's physique then. And I also, and I'm so glad because secretly I was, I wanted that, but I didn't think I, you know, I was so far from having enough muscle up back then. And I was like, I can't get that much muscle. <laughs> you know? It's like... And this is the other thing, Mark, I started when a lot of bodybuilders retire. I started competing at the age of 40, I think it was 46 or 47. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, that's like most people don't start. I'm not the only person. I know there's other people, but most bodybuilders start in their 20s. Some of them even before that. But I mean, it's usually, you know, 20s yeah. or, you know, the 20s for sure. They start. They don't right. start in their mid 40s. So anyway, exactly. you know, I, I did that and I was happy because I also prefer the posing. The way you do the posing um, is different from category to category. And the thing I loved about women's physique is you don't have to wear heels. So for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm only five feet tall. And I believe that God made me short for a reason. So yes, there are short women that do love wearing heels. I'm not one of them. So when I was in figure, I had to wear these really tall heels, which I had to practice walking in those heels more than posing because I'm just so not used to wearing heels. But it was so nice when you don't have to wear heels. I know you wouldn't ex you wouldn't be able to relate to that experience, Mark, but trust me on this one. <laughs> well, that, that's uh, what's funny about that is I haven't competed yet, but I feel like if I did, I would have the same experience as you, you know, like <laughs> not getting second. I don't know about that, but uh, getting hooked, you know, and the fact that you wanted to do something that wasn't like, um, like fancy, like figure, you know, you didn't want to wear heels and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, that's interesting. And now, and you, and you, are you still going to do it? Like, are you going to keep doing it? Cause you just, cause you just were at the Olympia, you know what I mean? So yeah, I did the amateur Olympia. So here's the thing in my journey. So, and, and we'll talk about, uh, okay. So Dan, let me answer your question. I'm taking a year off for sure, because I need to repair certain, um, injuries, <laughs> okay. repair the pocketbook because, um, if I'm sure you can only imagine I'm not a sponsored athlete, so it's very expensive to compete. Yeah. Well, you don't compete. I'm not to say that there's not winners in the pro level that make money, but I'm just saying I'm not one of them. I know I'm not genetically gifted. I know that for sure. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to compete. You know, it's just I'm going to put my best package up for fun and see whatever happens. But will I compete again? I would love to, Mark, but financially, it's not going to be for a while. And again, it really depends on the injuries, to be honest, because <laughs> I have I have some shoulder issues. So again, uh, for people who don't know about the body band industry, a lot of the times when you're when you're placed as far as, you know, first, second, third, fourth, whatever. Part of the, the criteria is symmetry, meaning one side is, is equal to the other. Right now, one shoulder is higher than the other because I have some inflammation and bursitis and some other stuff going on. So I need to have a more symmetrical look if I'm going to be able to um, compete competitively. I'm not even saying to win. Of course, I'd like to win. But to do competitively, I need to have a bit better symmetry. So I have to see if I can get these injuries worked on. Now, in the dream world, it would be getting stem cell therapy, but that's not in Canada. And the second thing is, I don't think I could expend, uh, afford it anyway. Yeah. It's super expensive. But We'll see how the injuries go. So I'm still training as if one day I will compete, but we'll see. We'll see. The body has to dictate. I'm going to be 55 at the end of the month. So this is the other thing. When you're competing, it's hard on your body, period. But then, and then obviously with recovery. But when you get older, it is it is more difficult and it takes a lot longer to recover. Um, and then, you know, after going through menopause, I mean, that does things to your body too. Yeah. So. You know, there's, there's certain challenges. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm training as if I'm going to compete again one day, but if I don't, I don't. And I've, I've, I'm at peace with that. And that's actually an issue that bodybuilders will, and actually I shouldn't just say bodybuilders, any athlete will go through is that some will have to retire or they come to an age because their body's not keeping up with them or they're not able to present as well. So they might have to retire, not because they want to, because their body's not cooperating like if they did it, your body competed, let's say, or cooperated when it was in their 20s or 30s. Or let's say you have an injury. There are lots of people who got injured before a show so they couldn't compete, but not even just at that show, they had to retire permanently. So we call that forced retirement. Um, so they, they stopped competing 
um, they were forced to stop competing because of their injury. So helping work on the mental piece about accepting that you don't have to like it, but learning how to accept it. And then what do you do with your life? Even if you retired on your own terms, you know, and again, this isn't just bodybuilders. This is with any athlete. They put their identity in their win loss record. So what I mean by that is if they're doing really well, they feel confident and that's great. But it's important to have what I call stable confidence is no matter how you do, it's knowing, did you cross all those boxes off? Did you make every practice? Did you eat what you should have? Did you try to get as much rest as possible? Did you work on recovery? Recovery meaning stretching, whether it mean physio, whether it mean, you know, getting that like any deep tissue work, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Like there's, it's a big package. And, but a lot of things is, People don't work on their mental game. This is also during the thing, yeah. not just after, right? But during during their com competition piece. Well, 